Wendell Van. Welcome to Bits and Bytes 2, Program 3, Numbers. Back to the old C prompt, are we? Uh, hold on now. Character-based DOS will be quite good enough to start off with for what we're going to do. Type 1, 2, 3. Oh, you weren't kidding when you said this episode was about numbers. 1, 2, 3 is the name of a computer program. One of the most widely used programs ever written. Lotus 1, 2, 3. Sounds like a beginner's class in yoga. Oh, oh, sorry, I forgot. It's in a subdirectory. Oh, don't tell me. I type CD for change directory, then backslash, then the name of the program. Good. Now you're in the subdirectory. Type 123 again, and you'll get the program. Doesn't look like much. What is it? It's a spreadsheet. Now, this is what really put PCs on the map. Oh, not word processing. No, afraid not. The business world could probably survive without word processing but it'd have a really tough time if it had to give up the electronic spreadsheet. You mean it isn't just something that keeps you dry when you go camping? No, that's an electric blanket. I think you're getting confused, Victoria. You know, that flyer you put together in our last program. Suppose your sales of hot air balloons really took off after that, increasing month by month. I could keep track of them with a spreadsheet? Well, if anything can keep track of a hot air balloon, a spreadsheet can. It's better than radar. Well, there's no menu to get me started. Okay, hit the slash key. The forward slash, not the backslash. Whoa, there's no stopping this lady. Okay, worksheet, range, copy, move, file. Now that's the one, two, three menu bar. Use the arrow key to highlight file. Then hit enter. Now retrieve. Balloons work one. Chinese worksheet one, that's right. How did we do in the north? Steady increase January through March, and we did even better in the other regions. Hey, business is booming all over, huh? If it goes on at this rate, I'll be... How far does this chart go? Well, look how the worksheet functions. It's divided into columns, A, B, C, D across the top, and rows 1, 2, 3, 4 down the side. So how many columns are there? Hmm, scroll right. Whoa, it goes on forever. 256 columns anyway. But wait till you see how many rows there are. Scroll down. To go straight to the end, hit the N key and then the down arrow. 8,192 rows of cells. It's bigger than Alcatraz. 256 times 8,192, that makes... 2,097,152 cells altogether. So what you see on the screen is just the tip of the iceberg. You bet. It's like peering through a magnifying glass at a tiny section of a gigantic spreadsheet. If you printed the whole thing out, it would measure, oh, six feet wide by 150 yards long. Good grief. I want to go home. You want me to finish this worksheet, don't you? Now, how did you guess? Okay. What do my March sales total? 1,832 plus 2,495. How do I get this thing to add up? Well, see your total for the month before February? Yes. Move the cursor to that total. Cell D14. Now, look at what it says in the control panel. The at sign, sum D6 to D12. Oh, I see. It's a formula telling the worksheet to add up the figures in the D column. So I can do the same for the E column. Move to E14, type the at sign, sum, E6, dot, dot, E12. Close parenthesis. Now just hit enter. 10,696. Once you've entered the formula, it'll go on working for you forever. So if my sales figures change from March, it'll automatically change the total? Well, try it. Now, I take it you're going to be offering a line of designer jumpsuits to go along with your hot air balloons? Mais naturellement. Oh, oh. écrivez le tableau noir, mademoiselle. Suppose in the West we made an extra $1,000 from designer jumpsuits in March, pushing us up from 2,876 to 3,876. Our total automatically changes to 11,696. I like it. You see, the first quarter figure for the West has also changed. It was 6,277. Now it's 7,277. Yes. 
I guess I have to type in the same formula to get my first quarter total. No, not really. You can just copy the formula for the March total. Slash, copy, enter. Oh, I don't want E14, I want F14. So I just move right and hit enter. So my first quarter total is 21,506. This spreadsheet is really powerful. Hey, I never go camping without it. Mr. Micawber once said something to this effect. Annual income, $100. Annual expenditure, $99. Result, happiness. Annual income, $100. Annual expenditure, $101. Result, misery. One way to predict our financial happiness or misery is to take a calculator, a pencil, and a spreadsheet and write the years along the top and our income, expenses, and profit down the side. If our expenses are 85% of our income, we use our calculator to work out what that comes to and then use the calculator again to subtract expenses from income to give us our profit. If we expect our income to increase by 10% each year, we use our calculator once again to work that out. And then again to work out our expenses. And then yet again to work out our profit. And on and on until our fingers are numb. Now look at how it works with an electronic spreadsheet. We don't need a calculator at all because every one of the 16,000 or so little cells on the spreadsheet comes with its own built-in calculator. To work out income, expenses, and profit for the next 50 years, all we do is give a number to the first calculator, an instruction to the second, another instruction to the third, another to the fourth, and so on. And then we just sit back and watch as a whole army of tiny calculators works out our future happiness or misery in the twinkling of an eye. If only Mr. Micawber had had a computer. Talking about misery, can a spreadsheet work out how much tax I'm going to have to pay on all this money I'm raking in? Oh, yes, ma'am. Retrieve the tax worksheet. Slash key to get to the menu. Quit to get out of the balloon worksheet? No, no, no. Quit would end one, two, three. Save your worksheet first. I bet I select File and Save. Yep. Replace? Yes. Now, to get the tax worksheet, File, Retrieve, and Enter. Oh, where's my tax? I hit the down arrow. Ah. Move the cursor to C17. C17, C17, ah, C17. I owe $6,508.32 in tax. Great. How did they get that? Well, read what it says on the control panel. Plus C15, asterisk, E2. So that's multiply C15 by E2, and E2 is 28%, and C15 is... $23,244, my income after deductions, from the total salary you've allowed me of $45,000. That's very generous. And you deserve every penny. Well, what if I take a bigger salary, say $60,000? Whoops. My tax goes up to nearly $11,000. Well, of course, that outrageous salary you're now demanding will also put you in a higher tax bracket. Ouch. Well, what if the tax rate goes up to, say, 35%? Then how much tax will I pay? Well, if it's a flat rate, just change 28% to 35% and you'll see. $13,385.40. Even worse. What if I bought more equipment? I could write that off, couldn't I? Say another $10,000 on equipment. Taxes due, $9,885.40. It's a bit better. Well, you see, that's the beauty of spreadsheets. You can play what-if games till the cows come home. It's like word processing, isn't it? You mean change one thing and everything else changes accordingly? Yeah. Right on. However much you change the numbers, the relationship between them stays the same. In fact, every single cell of the two million or so can be related to every other cell in any way you want. Hmm. Sounds vaguely promiscuous. 
And that other principle of word processing, never type anything twice, does that also apply to spreadsheets? Yes, indeed. Uh, get the household budget file, would you please? No, I don't want to look at that. The taxes were bad enough. In fact, I never want to see them again. Well, in that case, slash, enter, erase. Now, will you bring up your household budget just for me? You silver-tongued devil. Slash, file, and retrieve. Notice that your utilities, car, food, and miscellaneous change each month. But the house mortgage, that payment stays the same. So, to avoid typing 849 over and over again, I... Move the cursor to 849, which is B5. Hit the slash key and C for copy. Now press enter. To where? To C5. Oh, no, I want to copy all the way across. We'll type a period to mark the end of the range and then cursor across to H5 and press enter. Finally, a real labor-saving device. Now, if you're really nice to it, it'll even take out the garbage. But you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till you try macros. Macros? We did them in word processing, didn't we? Yes, but with spreadsheets, you can get macros coming out of your ears. A macro is a device for saving keystrokes. It automates a string of keystrokes. Uh, the string can be a matter of a few seconds, or it can be several hours, which you run overnight. Now, I'll demonstrate a very simple macro. First of all, we automatically name the cell with a preset name by means of the macro alt n which is quicker than the eye can see. Then we go to some other place in the spreadsheet. And when we want to return, we use the other companion macro, Alt-R. And we're back exactly where we came from. Now, the way the two macros that you just saw work, this one is Alt-N. Alt-N names the cell circumflex X. So the macro begins by deleting the name from wherever else it is. Then it creates the name again on the cell that the cursor is on, and the macro ends with a return command. Now, what that operation has done is to give a fixed name to the particular cell that you came from. When you want to go back to it, you invoke a second macro called Alt-R. It takes you to circumflex X, which was the cell you came from. It goes up five and left five, the purpose of that is to move the cell into the middle of the screen, and then it goes back to the cell and stops with a return command. And that's all there is to the return macro. A template, on the other hand, uh, is like a blank form, uh, which has the elements laid down in it already uh, for reuse. This template is a very simple spreadsheet which is used to keep track of my company's expenses. Uh, the same template is used every month, which means that this particular file, uh, which is blank as to items, is called up every month. The month is typed in where it says period, and the expenses are typed in in the appropriate columns with automatic addition down here. The spreadsheet is saved under a new name so that this old template can be reused for the following month. One of the most popular ready-made financial packages is called Quicken. Uh, here is the opening menu from Quicken, uh, which gives you a choice of the things that you can do. First of all, from the menu, we select the accounts. We put in the check number. Then we start typing manly insurance, but the program recognizes and records the entire payee in one. Then. We put in the amount. The program invites what category of expense this is. Now, we record it for posterity, like that. We put it in its proper place above, all automatically. The entire thing is pretty automatic and pretty foolproof, and that's the idea of these CAN programs. <laughs> Are there Windows versions of spreadsheet programs? Oh, sure. One of the really neat ones is Microsoft's Excel. Hmm. Same old sales report, but it does look a little slicker. Well, with a GUI version, it's even easier to apply the other principle of word processing. Make your document look any way you want. Boy, my sales are looking good. 
Well, that's just the beginning. Don't forget that you can draw pictures of almost any series of numbers. Most spreadsheet programs can do this, but Excel is one of the best. So I could get a pretty picture of how my four sales regions performed in January, February, March? Easy as pie chart. Pick out the cells you want to chart by moving the pointer to A4. Hold down the mouse button and drag it across the cells until you get to D12, then let go of the button. Now, click on the chart wizard icon on the toolbar. You see it's the second from the right? Chart wizard icon. Now move the pointer to the part of the worksheet you'd like the chart to appear and drag the pointer down to form a box. If the selected cells do not contain... You can, oh, no, 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 that's all right, you can forget that. Just click on Next. I didn't know this many types of chart existed. Bar, column, line. Think I'll pass on the pie chart. I'm on a diet. Settle for some nice skinny columns. Next. You read my mind. More charts. Oh, I see. These are all different kinds of column charts. Try number six. That should look good. Okay. Uh, next. Wow. Mm, like that? I love it. Click on next again. A legend in my own time? Sure. Okay, that's really something. Now to see your chart full screen, just click on it twice. I wonder how it would have looked with one of the other types of chart. Victoria, to hear is to obey. change my sales figures will the bar chart change accordingly may we click on the hyphen at top left I'll pretend I took in three thousand dollars in January in the north that's great and you've only been dealing with baby numbers imagine what a godsend a spreadsheet can be when you're wallowing in thousands and thousands of digits <laughs> This application has found many uses to analyze data that is beyond the size of a normal spreadsheet. It is designed for an executive who doesn't like to type on his keyboard. Typically, it's data that's collected from worldwide sales analysis and is gathered into a large mini-computer. And then we take a report from the mini-computer, and it is sent down to a PC-based system. And we take that information and read it into our drill down system so our spreadsheet analysis in this particular case the company which is Perkin Homer Corporation they sell laboratory instruments in over 200 countries around the world and they have at least 200 different products that they track on the system we have 72 columns of information so this particular application has about 3 million cells in it we can see that uh, Europe Mideast and Africa are, com are accounting for the largest portion of their sales we can go do a pie chart to visualize this. And we can expand that to a larger pie. And we can then graph the sales to see if there are any trends going on in this major segment. And the yellow trend line shows that we have a good increasing order volume right now. So we can look down and see how world sales for a particular instrument have done and then detail that out by geographic segment. The largest system we've done to date is looking at expense analysis for a company with 18,000 cost centers. And in that case, that comes out to about 86 million cells in the spreadsheet that we go and analyze using the same tool. When you really have acres and acres of data, I suppose it can take several minutes for even the most powerful spreadsheet to crunch all the numbers. Ah, uh, that's true. Well, time to get a cup of coffee. Well, if you insist. But if you can live without the caffeine, at the same time the spreadsheet's working on its numbers, you could be doing something else at the computer. You mean I could go into my word processing program and write a glowing report for my shareholders? Sure. Then you could combine it with your finished worksheet and your beautiful column chart. Well, that's not just task switching, that's true multitasking. Exactly. Working on two or more programs simultaneously. Here's an example of truly multiple multitasking. <laughs> this machine is an Amiga. Since its initial design, it's been a multitasking machine.
At the moment, I have a telecommunications line running, but that isn't all we can do. Now we're hearing the computer's voice reeling off numbers. Four hundred and three divided by thirty. Four hundred and four is even. Four hundred and five divided by three. Four hundred and six is even. And now something else is being printed out. It's printing at full speed. The communications line is going at full speed, and you can still hear the voice talking. But we're not finished. Here's the disk. While all this is going on, I'm going to format it. Put it in here. Now we have four different things going on at the same time. We're still not finished, but now I have to sort of ease the clutter a little bit. What we're seeing next is yet another activity being added to the mix, working with a pie chart. Under the moment, we're doing five things at a time. Now, the amazing thing is that all of these things seem to be happening simultaneously. One thing is going on without slowing down the other. How can that be? Well, it's because almost everything you ask a computer to do causes a computer to spend most of its time waiting. So you get almost something for free. But Billy, how is true multitasking really possible? After all, I've only got one computer here, haven't I, with one CPU? How can it do several different things simultaneously? Because computers and people live in two different time dimensions. Electric current travels through the computer circuits at very close to the speed of light, 300,000 kilometers per second, which is about one billion kilometers per hour. If an astronaut were able to travel as fast as that, he would be able to go to the moon and back in just under four seconds. One, two, on the moon, three, four, back on Earth. So, since just one chip inside the computer can contain many thousands of electric circuits, and since chips are so small that you could fit 25 of them onto a postage stamp, you can see that it's quite easy for an electric current to make the rounds of all the computer circuits in a few billionths of a second and thus enable the computer to perceive many millions of different on off switching patterns in one second but it's very difficult for us to grasp what all this means since our perception of time is so completely different here's a familiar example this appears to be a moving picture of a horse and rider but it isn't. It's a series of still pictures, which are being projected at the rate of 24 frames per second to give us the illusion of continuous flowing movement. The illusion works because the human eye cannot perceive anything that lasts for much less than 1 24th of a second. If we painted every 24th frame of this film black, we'd only just be able to glimpse it at normal film speed because it would only be on the screen for one twenty-fourth of a second. This is just about the limit of our perception of time. If it comes in chunks much smaller than one twenty-fourth of a second, it scarcely exists at all as far as we're concerned. For example, if we could speed the film up to, say, 48 frames per second, the black frame would disappear altogether. In fact, for most purposes, our everyday life is divided into hours and minutes and seconds. Whereas the computer lives in a world of thousands of a second, milliseconds, millions of a second, microseconds, and billionths of a second, nanoseconds. If the computer could see us, to its eyes, we would appear to be moving about as fast as a lump of rock and the second or so that it takes us to decide which key to press next would seem like a delay of seven or eight years. The speed of your computer also depends on how many megahertz you've got, doesn't it? Well, it only megahertz when I mega laugh. Billy. Well, show me your megahertz. How many have you got? Oh, I see it every time I turn the computer on. Where's my cheat sheet? What? I mean my spec sheet. 
Oh, I have 33 megahertz, which means my computer's heart beats 33 million times a second. Or you can think of the computer as doing 33 million things every second. Now, it just so happens that there are roughly 30 million seconds in a year. Why didn't I know that? You mean that if I pause to scratch my nose, the computer will think I've taken a year sabbatical? Well, that's how it can pretend it has half a dozen CPUs inside its head, even when we know it really only has one. It's like moonlighting, isn't it? What is? Well, multitasking. The computer's working in its spare time. Yeah, I wish I'd said that. Could I make my computer go even faster if I had a math coprocessor? Well, if you were doing a huge amount of scientific calculations with complicated decimal numbers, yes. But it wouldn't make any difference to the average spreadsheet. So I'll spare myself that option. But if my hot air balloon sales really hit the roof, I'm going to need a pretty big filing system to keep track of everything. Which is? What we're going to look at next time. What are you, psychic or <laughs> Yes, as a matter of fact, we will be looking at databases in our next program. And mailing lists and mail merge? And mailing lists and mail merge. Plus different kinds of memory in CD-ROMs and the Max HyperCard. I'm Billy Van. And I'm Victoria Stokel.